Hi, I'm Dr. Laurie Wellman, and this week on The Anatomy Guy, we're going to be discussing neuroanatomy, specifically the lobes and major fissures. The major objectives for today are to identify the six major lobes of the brain, to identify the major sulci separating each lobe, and to identify the major areas of the cranial vault. The six major lobes we will be identifying today are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the temporal lobe, the insular lobe, and the limbic lobe, which is not truly an anatomical lobe, but more of a functional lobe. Here in green, we can see the frontal lobe. Posterior to that, we can see the parietal lobe in red and the occipital lobe in orange, followed by the temporal lobe in blue. In this view of the brain, we can see the insular lobe in yellow with part of the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe cut away. In this medial view of the brain, we can see the limbic lobe in pink. We use major sulci to be able to determine the uh, delineations of the different lobes. The major sulci that we will discuss today and identify are the central sulcus, the lateral fissure, the parietal occipital sulcus, the preoccipital notch, and the cingulate sulcus. We can see here the central sulcus in green, the lateral fissure in blue, the parietal occipital sulcus in orange, the preoccipital notch noted by a purple arrow, and the cingulate sulcus in pink. The frontal lobe's uh, posterior edge is delineated by the central sulcus, and the inferior edge is delineated by the lateral fissure. We will now go to a whole brain specimen so that we can get a better idea of how this looks. We can see here on the whole brain specimen, the most anterior lobe um, is the frontal lobe. The posterior edge of the frontal lobe is the central sulcus, seen here, pointed out by Mr. Big Hands. And the inferior um, delineation is the lateral fissure. The frontal lobe is uh, important for executive function and consciousness, as well as motor. We will next discuss the boundaries of the parietal lobe. The most anterior boundary of the parietal lobe is the central sulcus. The posterior boundary is a line that extends from the parietal occipital sulcus superiorly to the preoccipital notch posteriorly. And this is sort of an imaginary line that is created. Then you uh, would draw a line uh, perpendicular from the edge of the lateral fissure back to that imaginary line, and that would create your um, inferior boundary of the parietal lobe. This will become more clear when we look at it on a whole brain specimen. We can see here the most anterior border of the parietal lobe, which is the central sulcus, as pointed out by Mr. Big Hands. The posterior border of the parietal lobe is an imaginary line that's created by the parietal occipital sulcus down to the preoccipital notch. The parietal occipital sulcus can be easily seen by looking on the medial view of the brain. If we can zoom in here, Mr. Big Hands is pointing out um, this sulcus on the medial view. And it comes up and over the top so that we can just barely see it on the lateral surface of the brain. But we can use that as a point of reference to start the creation of our imaginary line. Now if we zoom out again, we go inferior down towards the cerebellum, we can see um, a little indentation, which is where the preoccipital notch is. So we create an imaginary line from the parietal occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. And that is the posterior border of the parietal lobe. The inferior edge of our parietal lobe is the extension of the lateral fissure. And then where it ends, we drop a line perpendicular out to our imaginary posterior border. And those are the bordering edges of our parietal lobe. The function of the parietal lobe is to integrate somatosensory information.
The anterior border of the occipital lobe is the imaginary line that extends from the parado-occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. The occipital lobe is everything posterior to that border. And now we will see it on a wet specimen. The occipital lobe is the most posterior lobe of the brain. The anterior border of this um, is created by the imaginary line from the parado-occipital sulcus to the pre-occipital notch. Again, let's look on the medial view of the brain to determine where that parado-occipital sulcus is. We can see here Mr. Big Hands is pointing out that sulcus. We can see it comes just up and over onto the lateral surface of the brain. We can use that as a reference point um, to create that imaginary line. Now looking inferiorly, we can find uh, the bend, which is the preoccipital notch, and connect the two to create our imaginary line. You won't see a true sulcus here. Again, it is just an imaginary line. Everything posterior to that is what we consider the occipital lobe of the brain. The occipital lobe is, uh, functions primarily for uh, vision and visual processing. The superior border of the temporal lobe is the lateral fissure, and then a line that runs perpendicular from the edge of the lateral fissure out to our imaginary line from the parado-occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. And then our most posterior uh, border of the temporal lobe, again, is that imaginary line from the parado-occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. Let's look at a wet specimen to see what this looks like. Here on this whole brain, we can see the temporal lobe. If we think about the whole brain as a boxing glove, the temporal lobe would be the thumb. The most superior border of the temporal lobe is the lateral fissure as it heads back. And then when it ends, we would take a perpendicular line back to our imaginary line from the parado-occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. And then our posterior border will again be that imaginary line from the parado-occipital sulcus to the preoccipital notch. The temporal lobe is important for audition as well as for learning and memory. The insular lobe does not have any strict boundaries that we can see from the surface of the brain. However, it is deep to the lateral fissure as we will see next on a wet specimen. Here's a view of the lateral surface of the whole brain. Just to get you oriented, we can see here the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Again, we're going to go deep into the lateral fissure in order to be able to see the insular lobe. Now we will go to a different specimen that has part of the uh, frontal lobe and the temporal lobe removed so that we can get a better look at the insular lobe. Again, here we have a lateral view of the brain. However, this is the opposite side, so let's get reoriented. We can see here the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. And again, we cut away part of the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe so that we could see uh, deep to the insular lobe. As you can see here, the insular lobe has gyri um, and sulci, same as the outer cortex. The insular lobe is important for pain. It is also important for gustation and for bladder control. There are many other functions that have been attributed to this area of the brain um, that you can examine on your own. As discussed before, the limbic lobe is a more functionally determined lobe um, than it is strictly anatomical. So for this, we will determine the boundaries based on specific brain areas as, as opposed to specific sulci. These brain areas include the septal cortex, the cingulate gyrus, the parahippocampal gyrus, the uncus, and the medial orbital prefrontal cortex. Now let's look on a wet brain to see what these look like. Here we have a medial view of a half brain. Let's get our bearings by noting that this is the anterior portion and the posterior portion. We can also see here a really great parietal occipital sulcus on the medial view. Okay, starting with the limbic lobe, 
we can see here the septal cortex continuing around to the cingulate cortex which comes around to the parahippocampal cortex and then the uncus and finally the medial orbital prefrontal cortex. The limbic lobe is functionally important for emotion. We will now identify the six bones of the cranial vault, the area of the skull where the brain is housed. These bones include the frontal bone, the ethmoid bone, the sphenoid bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, and the occipital bone. Just to get your bearings, the top of the screen is anterior and the bottom of the screen is posterior. We can see here the frontal bone is in blue, the ethmoid bone is in gray, the sphenoid bone is in yellow, the parietal bone is in green, the temporal bone is in orange, and the occipital bone is in purple. Let's discuss the pearls and problems with today's episode. Don't assume that all brains look alike. If you've seen one brain, then you've seen one brain. Make sure to get around and see many different specimens so that you can compare what you've seen. Do remember that the preoccipital notch can be very distinct or barely there. And don't get hung up if the sulci are not perfect. Use general rules to help you navigate through the brain's landscape. That's everything for today's episode on the lobes and major fissures. Please join us next time when we discuss the major sulci and gyri of the brain. My name is Laurie Wellman. Thanks for joining us. I try not to swear in front of my kids. I say things fantastic like sugar plum fairy and cheese and crackers. Finally, in a medial section of the brain, why do I keep saying section? A medial view. Medial view, medial view, medial view, medial view, medial view. Medial view. View, it's not a section. There's no more cuts. It's a view. And the cingulate sulcus in per pink. I don't even know my colors. You may be bigger, but I'm spunky. It's like the dance. We can see here that, oh, sure, Plum Fairy.